Welcome to May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you. Buckets is dressed up as Bubba Fett. <laughs> I can be any type of fat you want. I can be uh, feta cheese if you want. <laughs> you want to take that off now? <laughs> yeah, I'll take it off. So we got Aaron and Brayden, my two yeah. loves. Welcome. Hello. Good evening. So tonight, yeah. tonight we are celebrating. Even though I have a drink of water in my hand. Cheers, big brother. Happy 21st to Big Brother himself and to all the housemates and to everyone who got involved in in production and cast in creating creating this amazing show. Happy birthday, Big B. We love you. So tonight we are going back to the past, into the future, and then back to the past and into the future again. So let's get started. Let the celebrations begin. Question one. How have we see this season fair, knowing there is a nostalgia factor, Aaron? Um, I think I think it'll be um, a bit different this year because people will be comparing it to to older seasons, and you know. So. What about you, Bray? Um. I think people. I think people will definitely watch it for the nostalgia factor. Mm-hmm. I think that um, when it really comes down to it, I I think people will want to watch it for that reason. I don't think there's a lot of fans that particularly enjoyed this Channel Seven version compared to mm-hmm. you know Channel Nine and Channel Ten. So I don't know. I do wonder. You know. Uh, I, it, it's a very up in the air situation, but I will say I am impressed with the promo that they have been releasing. I think that the social media team mm. are definitely doing their job. Kudos to social media team! Woo! So buckets, uh, you're probably familiar with one or two seasons. How do you th- I'm, I, I'm, I'm familiar with a few. Yeah. So how do you think we'll see the season fair? Um, knowing there is a nostalgia factor of, you know, going back to the very beginning when we had Peter and Christina with a dancing do now? <laughs> um, I, I think, you know, it'll just attract so much um, attention. So I, I think a lot of the hardcore fans that have been looking at the, um, the show, um, and, and it really is generational, and have been going, oh, I wish this was in it and I wish that was in it. And to just to see their old... Um, favorites come back um, will really ignite some passion in the show. So I, I think that's a really, really good thing. I, I don't know what's exactly going to happen in the show because we won't know until Monday. It, it actually airs. Yep. Um, but uh, I, you know, it, it, there is a lot of excitement involved, and I think people will will watch it because people who had their favourites who wished that they actually did win and didn't win would be in the show and, um, you know, they're, they're stars in their own rights. Exactly. Like for me, you know, let's take a trip back memory lane 21 years. When it first began, we had the Dancing Duna moment. Then mm-hmm. we had further episodes like Jamie and Katie getting for married um, in the Big Brother house. Then we had the turkey slap. And then we had, you know, uh, Aritzala Layla years later. (laughs) Um, Hi, Layla. Um, And then you have, you know, Tim Zee, Ben Norris. Mm. Uh, You had, uh, what are their names? Um, You had Ed and a few other names, Tahan, the Katie sisters, uh, Katie and Lucy. Um, And then you had sort of, after Sky and season 14, you know, that went quiet 
and then you go forward a few years later and then you had 2020, uh, you know, it, it was just un bloody believable. It was so dreamy. And I think it'll this year will fare because we have eight past legends royalty come side by side to play against, um, you know, eight newbies, I think. And it's going to be exciting to see how they form that into a whole season and what format is going to be introduced because the way the social media team are handling it, we're getting inklings of the past. We're getting inklings looking into how they're going to bring it about. So I'm excited about that. Next question. With Reggie being blind, how will Big Brother adapt to keep, uh, to helping her uh, tackle and take part in, uh, like, challenges and nominations, Brayden? Um, I'm not really sure. I do hope that there is some sort of equity being put into place. I hope that um, production have taken the initiation to actually understand, you know, oh, we've got someone who's, who doesn't have per- peripheral vision. Is that right? She doesn't, yeah. she can't see, like, can even see straight ahead, not, you know, yeah. all around like you used to. Yeah. So, yeah, I do. I just hope production does have taken care of that, knowing that she's going to be on the season. Um you know, I know, for example, I mean, the way less kind of dramatic, the way less dire situation, but um, in 2020, we had Sarah. Yeah. Do you remember little Sarah? Well, sorry, yeah, of course. Um, I believe that um, there was a couple of challenges where, you know, she kind of was looked after and I think a couple of the challenges that they have done, there has been that kind of, situation where they've kind of had to balance things out for everyone so you know mm-hmm. yeah so I do hope that there is some consideration for it. Um, can I say something about that well this is how it could honestly play out so if you've got someone who's blind on the show that might actually work out really well for that character because um, they won't the other contestants won't see that blind person as a threat. And in fact, they may find a, find it a little bit guilty to want to get rid of that player um, because it's like getting rid of someone in a wheelchair. It, it's something that they unconscionably just don't want to do based on guilt. Um, and, I, and I kind of suspect that that player might either go two ways. One, it'll be like another Kieran where... Um, basically everyone doesn't see him as a threat um, and therefore doesn't want to kick him out because if they get rid of him, it's just going to be someone worse. Or it could go the other way, which is uh, that blind player could prove to everyone that um, just because you're blind doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean you're not strong. And that would make some really great television to prove to ev- everyone that, um, how powerful someone can be, even if yeah. they're blind. So I, I wonder if they're actually going to take that that uh, take on it, to be perfectly honest. Aaron, was um, well, how so, will Big Brother adapt to helping her take part in challenges and nominations? Um, I, th- I think they would have thought about different ways, maybe different challenges that she, she can take part in. And, like, I, th- I think... Um, what, what I'm trying to say, um, I, um, yeah, I think I think there'll be some kind of aspect to to help her get on in challenges and stuff. For me, what worries me is a legend like yeah. Reggie, who's blind. I mean, we've known, we've seen previous challenges where Big Brother from 2020 to 2021, he has them climbing up high high ladders and stuff like that mm. and standing still on a pole. What worries me is Reggie being blind. How is she going to climb that, you know, just by feel knowing she can't get up there? And yeah. will that affect her? That worries me because 
for me, I see it as a disadvantage for Reggie because poor thing, you know, sort of how you're going to climb up stuff that's super high, how you're going to chuck a ball, how are you going to, you know, hold on to things real tight when, you know, obviously she's uh, a walking stick and not walking stick, a, a stick yeah. for, you know, a blind person. And, and that worries yeah. me because they have to take in, into consideration that, you know, they have to sort of trim down the challenges to not make it that frightening. Well, I mean, it really depends on how blind Reggie actually is. So Reggie could be partially blind. Now, if that's the case, that would mean that Reggie could still participate in challenges. Um, just, um, you know, Reggie may not be able to see everything. But um, that that could also mean, like a, my previous point was, it could also prove how strong Reggie actually is, that um, blindness isn't an obstacle, um, that, she, that Reggie can basically find other methods to basically find their, her, uh, uh, Reggie's way to actually um, to perform the challenges. I mean, she could, uh, Reggie could totally get uh, vote, voted out straight away, but um, there's a really good chance that, um, again, Reggie might um, be in some sort of success and they could totally underestimate Reggie. Yeah. Well, mm. next question. Here's a fun one for the 21st, for the big guy. Mm. What were your favourite memories from over the last 21 years? I think for me, <laughs> I mean, as I said, let's go back to the beginning. The diary room looked different. You know, there's a lot of juicy gossip. And then there was the up late versions of everything where what you don't see during the day or during the dailies, you would get to see up at night. <laughs> and then you would see like the dancing Duna. You would see Drew and Tully, Lawson and Kat. You would see, you know, um, all these other superstars, you know, having a bit of a, you know, sort of canoodle on the sides, you know. A canoodle, um, is that what you're calling it? A some, you know, uh, Layla and Sam, for example, Angie and Josh, you know, sort of Michael and Josh type of, you know, this bromance, love romance, showmance type of thing. For me, the memories are we got to vote them out and we got to save them. And I think this is what was fun over the last 21 years is we got the power to say and do what we wanted with these housemates. Yeah, but in the recent ones, we didn't. We, yeah, we, the we, recent ones we didn't, but over the last 21 years we had that advantage. And I think the freeze task was really funny, especially, you know, when, you know, Tully walked back in and kissed yeah, Drew. That was, sort yeah. of like he's stuck there and he's going, he's trying not to laugh and add and Tim and, you know, all these guys and sort of I, I miss the fond memories of up late and confidential and, you know, the irony and the secrecy and the fun and the juicy gossip. What about you, Aaron? Um, um, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah I, I, I miss the old format, um, like um, before it went to Channel 7, really. I, I just miss the the sort of old sort of back to basics thing yeah mm. what about you bro what okay um so my favorite moments mm. would have to be um i if we want to go all right back i would have to say when reggie won yes. um only because um when she sat down with gretel um she thought she had not only just won a PlayStation. Yeah. Like <laughs> that was that was seriously such a fun moment to watch. Like just Reggie in general, she's so real. Yeah. Like you just see her and like that's just her. Mm. Um another moment is Vesna. I remember like she made this comment, she's like, I'm sucking nothing like like just her winching. <laughs> like I'm currently, tr I'm currently watching um O five and like Bethna is such a funny character. I mean, her plucking her pubes and calling her vagina a burger. <laughs> That's that. so so funny. Um, and the Channel Nine version, I remember 
I remember like Tim and T- Tully's like rivalry. And when he said, when Tim said in the diary room, um, do you hear that, Tully? Yes. Like, that was so, that was, and then the Tim and DeHaan hair dry situation. Mm. That was like, and Ben and Jerry's. And then, mm. yes, and, and Sky. Yeah. Sky, Sky was just the moment. Mm. She was yeah. the standout character for our season. Mm. So, yeah. Let's see if, I think maybe, Brayden, you probably saw this. You've, you've watched many of the seasons. Um, my there's another favorite memory of mine when Brie Ama was wrongfully evicted. Oh yeah, and the yeah. count wrong, and then yeah. she got evicted. She was hoping to stay out because she didn't want to. That was her time done, and she actually demanded some markers, and she said, "I'll only yeah. go back in, into the Big Brother house in one condition. You get me a Big Mac." That's all she wanted. Was get me like a control. cheeseburger. Yeah, she said that on our, a current affair. Like, yeah. And then she went back into the house. She goes, quack, 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 quack. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> and it's like the shock on the housemate's face when she came back mm, in. Yeah. Like, what? You were wrongfully evicted, damn girl. <laughs> Do you have any memories? Um, you know what? I, I just remember uh, Kieran doing a three-point turn um, and that it was like his whole, oh intro- God, yeah. his whole introduction was basically... Yeah, I'm crap at driving, and he literally smashed the car whilst <laughs> whilst he was doing and, and, you know doing his whole intro, and then yeah. after that they actually got him to do a three point turn, but he was smashing pots and everything, um, and <laughs> all the housemates had to literally train him to do a three point turn in order to get some money, kind of thing, and yeah. they're all just going ooh. Oh, I don't. I don't think I'm trusted to, yeah. to drive. So they, so oh, you know, oh, like <laughs> yeah, that's a fifty-point turn. Yeah. 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 Next question: Where should the location be? If I can throw my two cents in there, I say, if they're listening out there, it needs to return to Queensland to Dreamworld because that's where the main attraction was. You have Sea World, Movie World, Big Brother House. And that's mm-hmm. where people go on vacation. Having it in Sydney is great and all, but it needs to go back to where it all began. And 21 years, mm. it's time after 21 years to return to its rightful location, and that's Queensland. What about you? You know what? I don't – you think that it, it, it does, right? And I, I think that if you can um, create the same setting, it doesn't matter what city you put it in. To be honest, mm. I mean, I know that they mm. had it in Dreamworld before um, and they had a live audience before. But you know what? You can emulate that in any city. You can put that mm. in um, Tasmania. You can put that in Melbourne. You can put that in uh, WA. You can do it in any city um, on, on just in, on the condition that you have um, an, a live audience, which can be re- reproduced anywhere. Um and um, you have um, an active um, number of participants. Participants. Uh, oh, sorry, participants <laughs> wanting, to, <laughs> wanting to basically take advantage. Participants. <laughs> Sounds like a nice cream. <laughs> Sounds like a nice cream, doesn't it? Yeah. What about you, Brayden? Um, yeah, you know, I grew up knowing that it was in Dreamworld. I live in Queensland. Hmm. So it takes me like a good hour and a half to get down to the Gold Coast. So, yeah, I mean, like, you know, I, I actually did go to Dream World like on several occasions and I would regularly see the house and whatnot. Um, did I ever go in there? I don't remember. Um, maybe I was a little too, I was too little. Um, but, yeah, look, I think... What they're doing this year with the whole um, Sydney Pavilion, because that's where it's at at the moment. Yeah. Um, I think them kind of opening the house up for people to walk in during the Royal East show, I think that was a good move. Yeah. But so in, in that regard, I do agree with Philip on that, but I, I do believe this sh- it should return to its home. But what I'm more thinking about is 
I guess the business behind it, you know. Yeah. Would it would it be profitable to have it at Dreamworld? Yeah. Would would it make sense? Would it is Dreamworld still a place that people go to these days? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so that's what I think about, yeah. Awesome. What I mean, like I don't care if it's on Summer Bay, to be perfectly honest, yeah. as long as it's running. <laughs> what about you, Aaron? Where do you think the location should be? Um, yeah. I think um, I think it should be back uh, um, at Dream World, to be honest, because th- that's where it all started twenty one years ago. I mean, I mean, you you can basically put the house anywhere now, and just like as as Philip said, you can like have an audience anywhere really. So it doesn't really matter where the where the house is, to be perfectly mm-hmm. honest. Yeah. Before I ask the last question, let's give it up for Gretel Colleen. I mean, she was the OG Gretel. Gretel. Yeah, girl. Gretel was the OG gangster, first female host of Big Brother Australia ever, and she paved the way for Sonia. I mean, let's give it up for Sonia Kruger too. Absolutely stunning baby girl. She's beautiful. She she made Big Brother after Gretel, and I have to give it up for these two strong, mm-hmm. amazing women because Gre- <laughs> Gretel, the difference between those two is Gretel was more she you saw her get angry when it was eviction time because if she was asking a housemate a question and they weren't answering she would have this like sort of you're not answering the question and sort of like you're going oh, oh, crap see this is what happens when there's no answer but then again <laughs> but then again then again you have sonia who poor sonia you know, a lot of people say a lot of things, but Sonia to me was powerful. She was important. She did what she came to do. She slayed. They both did. And I think Sonia was more sort of softer, more sort of mm. flirtatious, if I don't get in trouble for that. You know, sort of more sort of how you do it type of thing. She's that kind of girl and funny and articulate and witty. Like she's the one getting in trouble here. And charming. <laughs> I also love Sonia. You know, what do you think of these two women side by side? These two amazing hosts, Aaron. Um, yeah, I I agree with you. Uh, with uh, with Gretel, she um, she was to get really angry when when, so, when a housemate didn't answer. Um, do, do you remember that that moment when she got angry with a housemate, but when when he said, when someone said um, that that it was heavily edited to yeah to, to look like it, yeah, and I I always remember that moment like whoa like calm down. <laughs> yeah. Brayden, do you remember the whole Merlin episode when he got evicted with the duct tape on his yes, mouth, trying to be the refugees? And she was like, I Merlin, do. are you gonna say anything? Merlin, are you gonna talk like pushing like prodding? Yeah. Like I mean. I mean, she really handled that situation so well. Like, yeah. it, it, it was something that was never expected, but, like, it's the fact that she just kind of left. She left no silence. There was no gap of silence at all. Yeah. You know, she even just went to the housemates and, you know, asked them, you know, what's going on? Like, why do you know anything about Mel and doing this? Like, what? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, look. So are you going to ask me, like, the question? Like, I was just going to say, what do you think of, you have Gretel on one hand, you have Sonia, you know? Yeah. You could compare these two. I mean. mean, Yeah. I think, um, I think with Gretel, I, I astrologically relate to her. I'm I'm an Aquarius and so so is so she so is she and like we shared the same moon sign in Gemini so like I I, I like I relate to her wittiness and her banter and the way she holds herself I think it's really um like inspirational yeah and look I and when I look at um Sonia I think you know she does a great job of you know kind of you know being a presenter you know she's clearly great for that job because she's doing it on the voice she's doing it on 
who showed that show, whatever show, she was on Channel 9 before mm. she moved to Channel 7. So, well, she posted Channel 9 Big Brother, but, like, yeah. I'm just saying, like, she's always consistently been in the decision to to be a presenter on, like, a news, re- news show or, like, mm. a, like, a host. I think she fits that role really well so yeah of course I respect both of them so well you know they just have different qualities and they just execute them really well mm. what about you um Gretel versus Sonia well I, I think they're just two different people to be honest um I think that um Gre- Gretel is a bit sharper um she does like to interrogate the um the uh, contestants a bit more. Um, Sonia is a bit gentler kind of thing, um, but they're still great hosts. I, I think they're, they're they're great in their own way kind of thing. I think sometimes I think um, Gretel really knew how to tow them into line. That was the difference, and I think it was well needed, um, mm. especially when um, you had. I think because you had more contestants in the in the house than you did in the later series mm. uh, like if you you had like 20 20 people in one house um in the original series whereas um the newer versions you have like eight or nine and from there and for that reason uh, it goes quick, quicker yeah. but um i think um sonia kind of realized that um you know they're stuck in this house it can get really stressful and and so if you push people too much their behaviors will um will show that and so she was just a bit gentler and that's what I actually liked about Sonia I know she's not the original but that doesn't mean that she's not she's, great. She, she's not great I think yeah. she's great in her own way yeah, I and too. I think considering society has changed and the games have changed and um, the settings have changed, even the atmosphere has changed in the, in the house. Um, I think that's what was kind of needed. So I think she's adjusted to the change. Mm. So that's why I do, I'll, I'll support Sonia um, in what she's done. And I'll also support Greta. Gretel. Oh, sorry, Gretel, uh, based on the fact that it, it was just a, it was a different game with more people, with more uh, challenges, with more games, with more quizzes, whereas the newer versions they had, um, they, they still had their challenges, but the challenges were different. They were like more heavy duty kind of yeah. thing. So that's, that's, that's why I think that um, they, they, I think they made the right choice when they got Sonia. Yeah. And we are almost out of time. We got about seven minutes and 30 seconds. So last question, who will it be guys? Super fans or big brother royalty quickly? Brayden, go. Uh, um, <clears throat> oh, I think that, oh, I think that if we're talking about a final three, I think there could be a mix up. I feel like maybe one royalty could slip through under the radar and could do it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'll, I'm going to have to say give it to the royalties. I think that, you yeah. know, they've been through it once, they've seen it twice and throw them in and now they experience it twice. Aaron? Um, I'd say uh, ro- I'd say uh, royalty because like they- they've been through it once like can they do it again? Mm. Uh, I okay I question the royalty and I'll tell you why um, because um, depending on when they actually enter the game so if they enter the game late like some of the contestants have entered um that might be at a disadvantage. And also if the newer contestants see the new royalty, they will see them as a threat and they will want to get rid of them as quickly as possible Mm. because they're experienced. Um, So I don't know. I think that the newbies might actually have a real chance um, because you don't know anything about them. 
Whereas the royalty, you know lots yep. about them. You, you've seen them on television before. You know their behavior. It'll probably be the same thing again. Um, and they will fight just as hard. So I, I think, yeah, that it's anyone's game, to be perfectly honest. For me, royalties. And here's my prediction. Reggie, mm. Estelle, Ooh. Reggie, Ooh. Estelle, Trevor. Ooh. Final well, I, three. I, I, I don't know. Trevor's see, I know I know Trevor would be um probably popular, but I, I think also for that reason, the other contestants will want to get rid of Trevor for sure. Yep. Estelle, though they they'll want to make friends with Estelle because everyone loves Estelle. Um, mm. but, uh, yeah, I, I still reckon one of the newbies will get it. Estella, let's leave it to us. Estella was nominated eight times and saved eight times in Big Brother history next to, next to Daniel, next to Danny. Reggie, mm. Estelle, and Trevor. There's a toss-up between can Trevor take it up? Possibly. Can Estelle for the first time take out the title? Maybe. But could Reggie, Queen Reggie, beat them all to the end? I say go Reggie. Mm. It would be between those three. But that is it for tonight. Before we leave, let's one more time raise our glasses for Big Brother 21. I don't have a glass. I've got a phone. Happy so birthday, Big <laughs> <laughs> oh, first, And he's to another Wait, 21 years. I've got a helmet years. instead. How's that? He's to, he's to another 21 years of Big Brother history. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Braden, Aaron, and Buckets. We will see you all later. Let's and if you'd like to subscribe, we have a YouTube page, Cat Space. Click the subscribe button. There's a bell there. Click on that. It's down here where Aaron is showing you. Leave us a few comments and likes and loves. We also have a Facebook page. We also have a TikTok, tiktok.com slash at hello cat space five and Instagram account as well. Until then, goodbye and happy birthday, Big B. We hope you enjoy this podcast. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.